the conformity glitch. Line A, line B. Which one's longer? Easy, right? Until four people around you say the opposite. That's what happened in a classic psychology experiment. Everyone in the room gave the wrong answer on purpose. The real subject? They went along with it. Welcome to the conformity glitch, where your brain knows the answer but doesn't want to be the weirdo. It's not about sight. It's about fear. Fear of standing out. Fear of raising your hand and getting it wrong. Science says 75% of people will give the wrong answer just to blend in. So next time you agree with a terrible opinion, double check. Is that your logic? Or your survival instinct trying to avoid a group chat awkwardness? Night walking. You're asleep. Then you wake up, barefoot, outside, in the cold, on the street, 2.43 a.m. You look back. Your front door? Still locked. From the inside. This isn't a dream. It's happened before. A 19-year-old girl in Colorado was found nine miles from home, in pajamas, no shoes, no memory, no Uber receipt. Just there. She had night walked. Not sleepwalking. That's when your body moves, but your brain's on standby. Night walking is next level. You unlock doors, tie shoes, navigate Lego traps, all while unconscious. Science blames stress, REM distributions. Basically, your brain forgets it's supposed to be asleep. But if it's just a glitch, why do you move with purpose? Why does it look like someone is in control? You don't remember it, but something does. And apparently, it likes to go for walks while you're asleep. Phantom Vibration Syndrome You feel your phone buzz in your pocket. Finally, a message. Probably her. You haven't spoken in months, but hey, maybe she saw your story. Maybe she realized you're thriving now. Maybe this is the text that changes everything. You pull out your phone. Nothing. You refresh. Still nothing. No messages, no call, not even a calendar alert reminding you to stop being delusional. Congrats. You've been phantom buzzed. It's called phantom vibration syndrome. And yes, it's real. Studies say up to 90% of people experience it, which is science's polite way of saying, you didn't just get ghosted, you neurologically adapted to it. Researchers say it's your brain misreading small signals, a muscle twitch, the fabric brushing your leg. Pure imagination. Basically, your body expects a message, so it invents one. Some call it stress. Others say it's a tech addiction. You call it hope. But it wasn't her. It was never her. Just your brain sending you notifications it wishes were real. And you still check again, just in case. The falling glitch. You're finally drifting off. Lights off. Thoughts fading. Peaceful. Then your leg suddenly kicks like it just saw a spider. That falling feeling hits. Instant and sharp. You jolt like your body just got hit with a system error. Except you didn't fall. You were in bed the whole time. That was a sleep tick. Or if you want to sound scientific at parties, a hypnic jerk. Researchers say it's an ancient survival reflex. Your brain checking if you're in a tree or on the ground. Just making sure you're not about to roll off a branch and die. Which is cute, until you remember you live in a studio apartment with no trees. Other theories say it's a glitch, a misfire between your brain stems and motor system. Right as your body starts to relax, your brain panics, thinking this sudden muscle drop means you're falling. So it triggers a jolt, a quick test, just in case. Or maybe it's your brain doing one last status check, just making sure you're still connected before fully handing things over to the dream department. And judging by how hard you kicked, you passed. The send glitch. Your body passed the test, but can your mouth? Now imagine if your speech had the same glitch. Welcome to Tourette's, where your mouth gets hacked mid-sentence. Gianna DeVitro drives Uber with it and posts the chaos online. Her brain skips the filter and her passengers get a front row seat. One moment, she's offering directions. The next, she's yelling, No, Karen, I'm not into feet! You laugh, she laughs, everyone laughs. Except Karen. Karen's confused. Science calls it a motor vocal tic disorder, a misfire in the basal ganglia, basically the part of your brain that says, maybe don't say that. It's the brain's habit and inhibition center, and when it glitches, words skip the filter. Normally, your brain has a filter. It plans what to say, checks if it's appropriate, and then hits send. 
In Tourette's, that send button gets jammed. Words and movements fire off like reflexes. Uninvited, unfiltered, unstoppable. It's not emotional. It's not intentional. It's not even voluntary. Just a glitch in the brain's filter system. One that keeps hitting send. But Gianna doesn't hide it. She records it, uploads it, makes it funny. Like turning a brain bug into bonus content. For many with Tourette's, humor isn't just a reaction. It's a strategy. A way to flip the script before anyone else can. Because when your brain skips the filter, sometimes the best defense is being the one who laughs first. Mirror lag. You're brushing your teeth, fixing your hair. Same routine, same mirror. Then you move. And your reflection is just a split second behind. You blink. It blinks. A little too late. Happens once, you ignore it. Happens twice, you start to wonder which side is real. That's mirror lag, a weird reflection glitch where your brain lags behind your eyes. It's called a visual feedback delay, a tiny misfire between your brain and your eyes, more likely when you're tired, stressed, or standing in low light. And sometimes, you catch it in recordings. A kid moves, and the reflection hesitates, just long enough to notice, but too short to explain. Maybe it's just lag. Or maybe mine just waved first, and that's fine. <laughs> totally fine. Gut glitch. Lag in the mirror is creepy. But what about lag in reality itself? That gut instinct that makes you freeze for no reason. You're about to cross the street. The light's green. No cars in sight. But something makes you stop. No reason. No sound. Just don't. One second later, a car blows through the red. You didn't see it. You didn't hear it. You just felt it. That's the gut feeling. A quiet warning. No logic. No explanation. Just a quiet internal flag your brain throws without asking. Science calls it intuition. Your brain's rapid-fire ability to process patterns you're not even aware of. Microexpressions, tone shifts, peripheral motion, even posture all filtered and analyzed in milliseconds without your permission. It's like your brain is running a background check on reality and quietly flags, something's not right, stay still. And most of the time, it works. It's helped us avoid predators, dangerous people, bad sushi. But sometimes, there's no clue, no trigger, just a feeling you can't explain. That's when it feels less like instinct and more like your internal code is glitching. Some say it's anxiety. Others say it's a false positive, your brain misreading harmless input as a threat. Or maybe it's your system catching a ripple in the script, a warning from a moment that hasn't happened yet. Like in Woman of the Hour, the Netflix film based on a true story. In 1978, Cheryl Bradshaw appeared on The Dating Game and chose bachelor number one, Rodney Alcala. But something felt off. She trusted her gut and backed out of the date. Turns out, Alcala was a serial killer. Her intuition may have saved her life. And that's the thing about gut feelings. They don't explain. They don't convince. They just nudge. Like a phantom phone buzz, except this one's your brain saying, trust me, just move. Thanks, brain. Very subtle. The missing glitch. You're late. You grab your keys. You blink. And now they're gone. Not under the couch. Not in your bag. Not in that weird spot on the top of the microwave where nothing should ever go. You've checked the same table five times, even did the dramatic hand sweep. Nothing. Then, five minutes later, there they are. Middle of the table, exactly where you looked. Like they teleported in just to mess with you. That's the missing glitch. Science calls it inattentional blindness, or memory encoding failure, if you want to flex. Basically, your brain saw the keys, but didn't bother saving the file. So when you searched again, you weren't just looking for your keys, you were looking for a screenshot that never got saved. Some call it stress, some say it's distraction. Either way, congrats! You've just explained neuroscience while holding your keys like they owe you an apology. Or maybe they really did vanish and only respond after the simulation patched the bug. Either way, you're still late and now slightly suspicious of your coffee mug too. Hmm. The Memory Rendering Glitch Think of someone close to you. Your best friend, your mom, your partner. Now try to picture their face. Exactly. Not just the vibe, every detail. 
Harder than you thought, right? That's the glitch. You see them every day, you know them, but when you close your eyes, it's blurry. Your brain stores their voice, their laugh, the way they walk, but their face? It doesn't save high res. It's like a game asset rendered in real time, then flushed from memory once they leave the room. And that's not poetic, that's neuroscience. Your brain uses something called configural processing. It stores key facial features, eyes, mouth, symmetry, not the full image, just enough to recognize them fast, efficient, compressed, but completely useless when you try to reconstruct them from scratch. You think you remember their smile, but it's a blur. You think you remember their eyes, until you try to describe them. You remember the feeling of their face, not the face itself. Most of the time, you don't notice, until someone asks, and then it hits you. How many people in your life only exist when you're looking at them? The rest of the time? Just static. Try drawing your best friend from memory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Respawn Glitch You flatline, heart stops, brain goes dark, you're clinically dead. And then, you float. You're watching the room, doctor shouting, machines beeping. You see your body, but you're not in it. That's the near-death experience. Not a dream, not a memory. More like your consciousness forgot to log off. Dr. Rajiv Parti, a former anesthesiologist, swears it happened to him. He says he floated above the surgery table, watched it all, then drifted into somewhere else. When he came back, he wasn't the same. He left medicine and started talking about the afterlife. Science has theories. Oxygen deprivation, cortisol overload, your brain flooding itself with chemicals in a final firework show. But that doesn't explain why people across the world who have never met describe the same things. The tunnel, the light, the feeling of peace. Some say they saw every moment of their life play out like a highlight reel. Good, bad, forgotten, and sometimes, the sense that something was not done yet. Neurologists call it a dissociative state, your brain slipping into hallucination as it runs out of oxygen. But the consistency is inconvenient. Too many matching stories, too much overlap. So maybe it's just a well-documented chemical reaction, or maybe you got logged out before the system finished rendering the end screen. What's more terrifying? That it's all in your head, or that it's not. Ever known someone with a story like this? So, yeah, your brain glitches. It forgets names, misplaces reality, and sometimes thinks your phone just texted, I miss you. But it's not broken. It's just weird. Gloriously, stupidly weird. Thanks for watching. Now go wave at your mirror and see who blinks first.